Hey guys, so uh, today I'll bring you something uh, that I never did on the channel, something new. So as I said in the last two videos, probably, um, I am going to uh, be participating in the biggest and most important uh, chess tournament that I've ever been to. At least for me, it is the one that I feel like is the most important. It's going to be an international open tournament in uh, of seven rounds in uh, like four days in a row uh, and I'm preparing myself for the tournament and I want you, I want you to just to just take you guys for what am I doing to prepare and um, my mental state throughout and my strategies for training etc and um, and yeah let's see how it goes so let's start I'm gonna make probably two parts uh, one from the today is Sunday, so it's ten, it's eleven p.m. Sunday, so very very nice timing to start, right? <laughs> At eleven p.m., uh, but it's eleven p.m. Sunday, and uh, let's start the training right now. And uh, probably part one will be until like Friday, and then part two until the uh, Thursday or something like that. I like to see, but um. Yeah, so what is my plan, overall plan? So my overall plan is I have a, a book that I've been talking about in some of my videos. I'm planning to read a lot of that book. So I would say that 70% of my training will be reading the book and just doing the exercises and all that stuff, learning all that good stuff in the book. And the other 30% will be for opening preparation. Uh, and yeah. Just for, for myself, I just, I feel like I need to be a little comfortable with everything that they can uh, throw at me during the tournament. So yeah, just training my stuff with the black pieces and the white pieces. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to try to um, create some nice montages of my, my training, etc. And I'll, let's see how this all will pan out. And yeah, let's start reading the book right now.
So just finished day two of uh, the practice preparation for the tournament. And uh, I would say that it went really well, you know. Uh, yesterday I uh, was looking at uh, some doubled pawns position, isolated pawns, and uh, it was very interesting. Uh, it was more like also like uh, not only that, but finishing off positions that you know you're better, but you don't know like how to um, improve your position further and how to just do that final blow in um, your opponent's position. Sometimes it's hard. And um, the book uh, told me, uh, I learned something from the book really nice, which is sometimes like if you're only targeting like or attacking a weakness in your opponent's camp, he probably will be able to put all the effort to defend it. But um, I learned by the book the principle of two weaknesses, uh, which I think it's the principle of two weaknesses. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but just basically means that uh, if he, your opponent, you created a, a weakness for your opponent or he gave it to you for free, you should um, do everything to target that uh, weak pawn, for example, but to just put the um, sherry on top of the cake, you should also just try to create another weakness. So uh, if your opponent has two weakness to deal with, he probably will crumble and you won't be able to defend both and you'll just be able to like uh, improve your position and win the game. Um, something like that. But I understood the concept of um, just uh, if you if you are targeting a weakness in your opponent's game, just try to, to like create another weakness for him to defend and deal with, and you will probably won't be able to um, uh, defend it uh, the position. And also just like things that I didn't really pay attention or even knew the concept or wasn't even in my mind while playing, which is when you're playing like against the isolated pawn, for example, just you want to probably just um, trade all the minor pieces and like keep a queen or a rook and just blockade that pawn and then just like focus on that. Um, and uh, also the double pawns, just how to target the double pawns and um, how to play around them uh, when you're uh, attacking them. The book didn't cover yet too much about like defending or playing isolated pawn position when you are playing. It was more, uh, in this chapter, was more like attacking them. Also today, um, also there were some positions where um, where I found very interesting, uh, and I they they said the move that um, it was a move that won for black or something like that, but it wasn't that obvious. And uh, it's funny because I played it out uh, against myself because I really didn't understand how that could be so good. And um, I thought it was a little bit risky for Black, but just to do an example, I played it out and it should be winning for Black, but playing against myself, I actually won with White, which is very embarrassing, so I'll probably just put that position... I took a photo, a couple of photos of that position, I'll probably just play it against Stockfish and just understand why that move was so good. For example, that's how I treat reading the book. For example, today uh, I learned about the Irish Pawn Center, which I never heard about that in any... Uh, video stream or whatever or book and Irish pawn center is basically a triple pawns like triplets so triple pawns or whatever and also like just some concepts about the triple pawns as well uh, how to play around them and why they most of the time are so bad and like positions and examples of how to deal with them uh, and also start um, Looking at a very nice, um, very nice chapter, which is weak squares, and that is very, very important. And just how to um, how to notice potential weak squares in your opponent's camp, and how to use them and utilize them for um, the your advantage. And it was very nice. The weak square part was, um, and we he did a lot of examples in the book. And uh, yeah, I felt like was very nice and very very insightful and i started uh looking at it more because like i don't know but in my opinion i when i'm playing a chess match competitive chess match i uh i pretty much only just uh try to 
like find the best moves um, but I'm not really looking at squares like that or just positional how to position my pieces correctly or the aim for that position or creating weakness for my opponent and stuff like that I'm not that thinking that much about it because of lack of knowledge most of the time but I need to as I learn more with the book I should utilize um, the time where I'm thinking about the moves that I should play and also for example I have a very difficult time thinking about the position and my moves while my opponent is thinking but yeah I should use that time to just uh, understand the position and see what I want to do with that position maybe look at some uh, weak squares that I can explore and just uh, just simple but at the same time complex things like that make a difference um, in the end and uh, I should uh, my my chest is, is, is still very weak uh, regarding that type of thinking and I really want to uh, bring that type of thinking uh, to the uh, classical and uh, slow games and the matches, the FIDE matches because um, yeah in Blitz I, I mean in Blitz for me is just intuition and whatever and try to find tactics in a short period of time but in classical where you have a lot of time you know 90 minutes plus 30 seconds increment you like all the knowledge that you have and just um, it just pays off exactly a lot in positional play whatever whatever want to call it and yeah that's pretty much it so i studied like uh, yesterday i studied like for one hour and 10 minutes today i started i studied for an hour and a half so 90 minutes and yeah it's not that much honestly but um yeah my my stamina for for studying like the book and stuff like that is not the best right now and uh, I am hoping that while I'm training and reading the book, I will also be able to each day study 20 more minutes, you know? If I can study 20 more minutes than I did yesterday, I think I would be happy because, you know, it will create some sort of um, resistance and some sort of, um, of habit that will also help me um, and focus will help me uh, during the matches because like there's matches that take like three four hours so if i can't keep up my focus uh during do that um time space i will um my play will just decrease and you know it will happen happen things like i think it was game 11 where i uh completely uh, lost a, a, a drawn game um because I mean, I just was completely exhausted and it was like four hours or something like that. But that's no excuse. But I, I'm working on all aspects like that. I haven't looked at openings yet, but I think openings I will probably look um, a bit later uh, during uh, the week. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm really uh, focused on the book and uh, learning all these concepts and, uh, you know, uh, thinking about them during the chess match. Uh, it's gonna make a difference, I believe. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. And um, I think this will be it for part one, because actually, uh, this will already be enough time for you guys. And uh, if I make another part, it'll probably be to If I keep going and I don't cut this video out, it will become very big, and we don't want that. We want nice size. But yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for part two of the preparation for a chess tournament thanks guys